Hi and welcome back to the channel Stephen right here today with a figure photography project this time around involving a scale figure. Well, I actually had another project which I wanted to do a video of which involves surprise figure Sega Price Tiamat. By the way, this is what I got last week but something happened to the video like it was completely my own mistake and then I thought, well, it isn't worth continuing. I only filmed some B-roll intro stuff, but in the end, I decided not to proceed with the video on that one. So the figure in question right here, this is Max Factory's 1x7 scale Saber class version of Frankenstein from Fate Grand Order. Or uh, Frankie Summer as I call her. I have reviewed this figure before. It is a relatively old review on this channel where it was filmed back at my home in the past but do check it out if you are interested in this figure the link is right up there well this figure is really cheap nowadays like you can find her for under 10,000 yen occasionally yeah but if you want to find the very best deal for this figure you have to find it in Taobao not in Japan not in Ami Ami or Mandarake well Mercari Japan it is possible to find her for under 10,000 yen but the best price at the moment is Taobao where you can find her for under 500 Chinese yuan yep under 500 right I got her more than a couple years ago at such a big discount where this is one of the cheapest FGO scale figures I actually own right and Max Factory actually did a fantastic job on this figure maybe this is not a very popular character so I have no idea what happened like why did she become so cheap why did she bargain bean when there is really nothing quite wrong with the figure yeah perhaps the character isn't popular what you're looking at yeah this is an artificial beach right why go outdoors and hike for kilometers sometimes why go out and suffer under the summer sunlight like the temperature outside right now in my country is 33 to 37 degrees celsius 33 to 37 so it is no joke how stifling hot it is outside not to mention the one problem i have with outdoor beaches in general is that number one we have people interfering right like people will photobomb you i don't know how it is like in your country but in malaysia people are pretty good like they don't care if you are standing in front of a camera they would stand exactly right next to you or right behind you and photobomb everything and ruin everything even though even though they know the camera is running yeah they just don't care they, uh, uh, that's the thing if you go to japan for example for a vacation you will notice when you are taking photographs or even filming yourself a vlog maybe when people notice you are using a camera they will avoid getting in your way like they'll keep a distance from you not necessarily because uh, of privacy reasons like they don't want to appear in your video not necessarily that case they are just respecting your space you can't say that in Malaysia like people just don't give a F right about you that's the thing the second problem with going outdoors is that other than the temperature or the climate the general landscape with beaches outdoor real beaches in general is that you no know, the sand is going sloping downwards into the sea so you are actually photographing on a landscape that is uh like sloping down declining right <laughs> an opposite of an incline get my point you are slope you are shooting downwards towards the sea so in general photographs that are taken at a beach they they don't look good right and if you try to involve water you know how damaging salt water sea water is to cameras i figured that the best way to do this is to create an artificial or fake beach over here yeah so there are several things needed so frankenstein the figure is actually plugged into her original base and I just covered the base with sand over here. So you are hiding the base underneath the sand. It is the same exact thing you do outdoors. Here is the trickiest part. I wanted to do this photo set for over a year now, but I was lacking confidence because I don't know how realistic things would look or how fake things would look when I do an artificial beach involving seawater apostrophe right there seawater so this seawater over here this is the key to everything right so i was thinking 
if I were to actually do a diorama involving uh, artificial water, I would need resin. That is extremely expensive. And knowing that this figure, this character is not popular, even if I did a great job with photography, like very few people would care, I did not want to spend too much money on a setup just to photograph a figure of a less popular character. I'm doing this for my own sake, like I enjoy photography of anime figures, I'm going to do it. And I want to do my own FGO portfolio where I want to cover as many FGO characters as possible. I love FGO, right? So cost is an issue. And I was thinking, why not just use a sticker? Like literally a sticker, a wall sticker, <laughs> and see how things turn out. Of course, I am not going to make a figure walk in water because if you do that, then of course you are going to need resin. Like some anime figures you see the base has water splash effect. If you make the figure walk in water, you're going to need resin to create those water splash effect, which is not an option over here. So I decided to buy a sticker, pasted it over a, a foam board, right? So this foam board with a print with a sticker on it, I'll just cover the very edges of this board with sand, just like that. And then when I take a photograph, I'll just manipulate my aperture in a way that the C is out of focus. So the end result, as you'll see later on, is actually turning out to be pretty realistic looking. Yeah, and some people said seawater is supposed to be more reflective, like you know, uh, I'm not sure how to describe it in words, but let me put a picture over here I stole from the internet. Yeah, uh, the one on the on one side, yeah, that is what sea water looks like to the human eye. Like it is reflecting sunlight, so there is that shiny white patch thing. That is what it looks like to human eyes. But in photography, we don't like all those reflections. It is a really bad thing. So we use a polarizing filter. We literally stick a filter in front of a camera lens to remove that reflection. We call that a CPL or circular polarizing filter, right? So the final result looks more professional. The water isn't as reflective. Since this is not real sea water, not real water, there is no need to deal with all those reflection issues. No polarizing filter needed. As for the sand over here, right? This is no ordinary sand. I could have went to the beach and dug out the sand for free. But the problem, at least in my region over here in my country or where I live, the sand at the beaches over here, the particles are too coarse in texture. I want something finer. So I actually bought this sand over here. This is like ultra fine sand. Uh, it almost feels like flour in a way. So the reason why I wanted ultra fine sand is because it looks more realistic in an anime figure photo, right? I mean, imagine a 1x7 scale figure and then the sand particles are so big, like, like this big over here. It looks like walking on pebbles instead of on sand and I don't want that in my photograph. That is one more mistake a lot of toy photographers make, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, sand particle size, water particle size, all, all these things, I take them into account when I do photography. So it is also not my style to spray water, like real water, spray it on a figure. I don't do that unless I find a way to make the water particle as fine as possible. Yeah. And then uh, the last two things over here, it, uh, the first one, this wood over here, you go online or go to an aquarium supply store, Look for all these uh, wood which you throw into an aquarium. I bought two of them. I am not a fan of photos that are too simple. I always find ways to make a diorama look a bit more sophisticated or complicated so that it feels realistic at the same time. And it is not uncommon to come across tree roots or branches in the sand. So that is what I went with and the result looks fabulous. And lastly, these... <laughs> These tortoises and all these creatures over here, yeah, once again, thinking about detail, what I can add to the scene to make it feel a bit more realistic. So these are a bit like gashapon toys of some kind. Yeah, you can find it on Taobao or you can just look for all these miniature toys online. Yeah, look in Japanese websites even, you can find them. And if you guys noticed, yeah, this particular setup over here does not involve 3D printing at all. No 3D printed parts. Everything here are purchased from store online or elsewhere, right? Now we move on to lighting. Okay, so this print over here, as usual, I love using artificial backgrounds that are printed on cloth because cloth is 
translucent. So they glow when you hit it with a huge light source from behind. Yeah, there is a huge soft box behind and it glows, I can adjust the brightness as much as I want, right? And then moving on to lighting over here, yeah, one for the background, two in front as usual. As you can see, this pair of lights are, uh, they are LED lights, they are extremely cheap. One of these costs less than 10 US dollars, you can find it on AliExpress if you wish. And in front over here, this is literally tissue paper acting as a diffuser. Once again, you can put a soft box in front, up to you, but I'm just using tissue paper because it works, right? Yeah, several layers of tissue paper to soften the light so that the light looks more natural in a way, right? One last thing about the lighting is that this may seem a bit unrealistic to some people because if you have taken a photo of anyone before at a beach during sunset where the sun is behind, you would know the person in front of the camera would totally black out like a silhouette. Uh, this photo of Miyazono Kaori I took a few years ago outdoors. This was actually outdoors. This is an excellent example. You get a silhouette. But what I'm trying to replicate over here is more of a professional portrait photography kind of style. So if you see how wedding photographers, they take photos of their clients outdoors, yeah, they will use multiple flashes, wireless flashes, firing from different directions and that is exactly the kind of effect i'm going for over here we have sunlight behind but we have kind of implied flash being fired from multiple different angles over here yeah this is the final result of the photograph like uh yeah the one on the left that was straight out of camera well yeah there is still quite a bit of shadows still a bit of silhouette over there right and then i lifted those shadows in editing and then i tuned the colors a bit the editing process for this photograph was relatively straightforward and easy like there is no need to use photoshop to do so many uh, artificial or digital effects like beam sabers and all those things not needed for this particular shot over here i went from being completely lacking in confidence to being very happy with the result I got over here, despite <laughs> using a sticker for the C portion of the photograph, right? So if you are looking into picking up figure photography as a hobby, yeah, try to buy yourself a camera like this. It will benefit you in the long term. I mentioned this in a previous video on figure photography involving Sega's Cleopatra. The link is right up there. Go and check out that one as well, where I showed you guys the difference between smartphone and actual camera in terms of photo quality, right? So with today's video, this is a behind the scenes look into one of my figure photography projects out of many to come. Yeah, uh, this isn't something every one of you subscribed to this channel would watch because not every figure collector would be interested in figure photography. You just want to collect figures, but that is fine. This is one of my passions. I love photographing anime figures, so I'm going to make videos of it anyway, right? So if you found this video to be helpful in any way, like you are aspiring or learning figure photography, then yeah, give this video a thumbs up, a like, and consider subscribing to this channel for both anime figure content and also figure toy photography content. Until then, I'll see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.